Hello viewers and welcome to another episode of Trash Talk on Flying Circus, Flights of Fancy Special, where I talk about the planes in the book. You know what this is already, we are moving to the next three planes within this plane pack, starting with the Sonnenjager Seatenwinder, a very friend-shaped plane. During the false peace of 1590, many members of the Theller aircraft design team left the company amid brewing quality control scandals, these engineers had the support of the radical liberals, the ascendant opposition party, and found new employment at Sonnenjager Kaiserlich's arsenal, privatized soon after as Sonnenjager AG. Among the early designs of the new Sonnenjager company was an entry into the 1592 contest for a new light superiority scout to be equipped with three or more wings, the stubby Seton Winder, with its distinct chubby nose, was built due to the perception that no rotary engine would be viable in the castor oil embargo. Unfortunately for Sonnenjager, the selection committee had been promised that new synthetic oil technologies under development would negate the need for castor oil, and so the safer and lighter Kreutzer Spinner won the contest. The Seatenwinder was hastily awarded a reduced contract to save the company, under the pretense that regional militia in need of scouts would be low priority for lubricants. Given the subsequent failures of Airzat's toll, perhaps the Seatenwinder would have been the superior choice. Ah yes, the false promise of synthetic castor oil strikes again, anyway, quadruplane, back when people figured that the more wings an aircraft have, the shorter and more compact it could get, and that's technically correct, and yes, it's real based on the Friedrichs half an FF.54 which I'm definitely misspelling, and it is exactly as chubby as the art. But as people soon find out from aerodynamic tests, the benefits of triplane and quadruplane were outweighed by the fact that more wings mean extra weight and drag from structural bracing, with loss of lift from aerodynamic interference between the wings, and soon enough, they were fully phased out by more advanced biplanes, and even biplanes weren't safe from progress in aerodynamic eventually, but before that happens, it didn't stop some truly insane ideas from existing in reality. In terms of stats, it's just a very decent dogfighter, with very high handling, decent speed, strong frame, two machine guns, and a high offset radiator that can take some hits, the plane is extremely unstable, almost unflyable really, and you can't see crap with all the wings in the way, but other than that, it's decently priced and very good at dogfighting, I suggest a comm pilot in the cockpit. But at the same time, Compared to high-end rotary fighters, the Sonnenjager Seatenwinder might seem just a tad less agile, but, you also don't need castor oil, and running cheap coolant in a liquid-cooled engine is a very different experience compared to running cheap synthetic castor oil in a rotary engine. As for its variation, there's just one, a triplane version with the low wing removed, increasing its stability, speed, but making it less agile. To put it shortly, if you are good at controlling the plane, the Sonnenjager Seatenwinder can be a very good friend to you. Next up, there's the Tejas Interceptor, the cutting-edge Skyborne plane. Outside of universities and a few design labs in Sopwith, there are very few people designing new planes, while the lack of standardization between Skyborne convoys does sometimes lead to innovation, there is also a streak of conservatism which tempers it. The Tejas is in many ways a perfect example of these competing philosophies, it is in some ways a classic Skyborne design especially compared to its contemporary in the Bahadur, where Skyborne aircraft are concerned, there is little revolutionary about a tractor monoplane with a clinker-built airframe and shoulder-mounted monowing. By contrast, the introduction of a small lifting surface between the landing gear, the utter lack of tension bracing, the contra-rotary engine, and the metal cowl covering both engine and weapons are all bold choices. Many had doubts, but the Tejas has proven to be the fastest and toughest Skyborne produced scout to date, while few exist today, it is likely that Skyborne escort squadrons will one day consist mostly of Tejas interceptors. The Tejas is a very ridiculous plane, but in a way you probably don't expect, look at its high speed, not even the Ritter Model X Fock could achieve it, and it did this with a 110 horsepower engine, now that is peak optimization. It's also an extremely good energy fighter, with very high strain and absurdly low energy loss, you can stay at high speed for a very long time if you play it safe with this plane. On top of that, it has a large ideal altitude range, decent stability, decent visibility, altitude throttle for war emergency power at really low altitude, rotary engine, clockwork autopilot, and two pneumatic machine guns for plenty of firepower, this thing has everything it ever needs, and it really pays with its price. Usually, as an energy fighter, you want to stay away from extended dogfight, but with its very low energy loss, things are a bit different here, with just its high speed and rotary bonuses alone, you can win dogfights surprisingly often even with its low handling, 
and with increased ammo count from pneumatic modifications, you can outlast your opponent too. As for its variations, like most Skyborne planes, just do whatever you want, there's no standardization here, but ask your GM before you turn your plane into something else entirely. As a conclusion, if the Tejas Interceptor represents the future of Skyborne Escort Squadron, everyone else needs to seriously catch up fast or they will be left behind. For the last plane of this episode, there's the Sonnenjajer Highfish, just a very tough seaplane. Despite a handful of early successes such as the Hummel, and the steady sales of the pre-privatization Walfish, Sonnenjajer AG was soon plunged into a deeply hostile market as the radical liberal-dominated imperial diet was dissolved by the emperor. The election of 1595 is widely believed to have been a coup, in collaboration between the aristocracy and Theller Korperskaft, who by this time had spun their war profits into ownership of nearly half the heavy industry in the empire, Sonnenjajer would now be fighting an uphill battle for every contract, but there was still opportunity. While the Fokker Kingdom's Fisher units carried the amphibious war against Maki, Gotha had no intention of ceding the water to its increasingly temporary ally, a seaplane scout was ordered, and the Highfish handily beat a floatplane Cobra MD. However, shortages of the original Brandt Patriot engine delayed the entry of the aircraft until after Maki fell, with downgraded Highfishes deployed to the southwestern front and then forgotten. Even without the 210 horsepower Brandt Patriot engine, the Highfish is already better than the Theller Cobra MD at a cheaper price, with slightly better agility, climb rate, and a way tougher frame, it's almost like there's a conspiracy going on in the former Gotha Empire with Theller, but I guess having three machine guns just win over everything apparently. But anyway, the Sonnenjajer Highfish is a good but otherwise unremarkable seaplane, with high speed, okay handling, lots of power, very tough frame, and two machine guns, it is very worth it at its current price tag, and also, it's a seaplane, even if you get shot down, you can still use it as a boat, assuming you are still on water. As for its variant, there's an interceptor variant which replaces the float with wheels, which doesn't affect any of its stat really, and the original variant with the Brandt Patriot engine, along with one extra fuel tank, it is just plain better with more speed and power, but also more expensive. If you just want a really tough and speedy seaplane, the Sonnenjajer Highfish is what you are probably looking for. And that's all on these three airplanes, from the friend-shaped Sonnenjajer Seton Winder that can spin like a wheel as long as you don't spin out of control, the high-end Tejas Interceptor that represents the cutting-edge engineering available to the Skyborne, and the tough Sonnenjajer Highfish that's just decent at what it does, that's all for now and I will see you all next time. Hello there, if you like this video, please subscribe to my channel and click that notification bell button. If you really want to support my channel, you could visit my Patreon page, or buy me some Kofi, links in the description. Anyway, have a nice day.